Imaging and processing the sun in white light. So here we have a mosaic of the sun showing a sunspot and some surface detail. This video will take you through the equipment you're going to need, how to capture it and then how to process it to get that final image. Most obviously we need a telescope. In this case I've got a 910mm focal length refractor uh, with an 81mm aperture. My mount is an azimuth style mount uh, and then in terms of camera I've got an astro camera here but you could use a DSLR camera. For a DSLR you would need an adapter to go in place of uh, where your lens would normally go. I've also got a filter wheel fitted but that's not a necessity um, and you're going to need a computer to actually capture those images. With a DSLR camera you could use a remote uh, but you certainly wouldn't want to be touching the shutter button by hand because you'll just uh, shake the camera. Finally you're going to need a white light solar filter, um, this one here is one that I've designed and 3D printed. This one's 100mm in diameter and it's available on my Thingiverse page. You'd have to fit a suitable solar film, I use Badir solar films um, and it's quite normal to have crinkles in it like that, it won't affect your image. So first of all you're going to locate the sun by moving your telescope by hand. Um, I use solar eclipse sunglasses to help me actually look up at the sky and, and sort of see the sun and in line with my telescope. On screen there you can see I've located the sun and I'm locking my telescope mount into place. With slow motion controls like these we can move around the sun left to right or up and down and this really helps us when we're capturing our images as we don't have to unlock the telescope and move it by hand we can just really easily pan across it. So now we're looking to get the telescope into focus, so we're moving the focus slider um, around until we get a nice sharp edge on the sun. So now we're in our software package and I'm looking to take some photos here starting from left going to the right um, so that we've got all the panels we need to build up our mosaic. So when I get across to the right I'm then going to go down, take the bottom right hand side of the sun and then back to the left and I, my mosaic is going to consist of four panels. So I've taken all my panes and I'm just experimenting now with some different filters. So I've got a Badir Solar Continuum filter here. Um, shows the sun in a really green filter, but it's quite good for picking out a little bit more surface detail. So I'm doing the same with that, just taking my four panes that I can build into a mosaic later on. And then here I've actually taken my um, UV slash IR blocking filter off my camera and I've fitted an IR pass filter so I'm only allowing infrared light through and I'm just doing the same, just taking some shots of that just to see what, what out outcome I get. The clock there on the right hand side is something that I programmed for Windows, um, you can download it from my GitHub, it gives you quite a lot of astronomical functions so side real time, UTC time, you can set pet counters and met counters, it's quite a useful tool that one. I suggest keeping all your images well organised in folders, um, so a separate folder for each filter that you've used and then when we get to the processing stage you're going to be going through those photos and you're going to be picking out your sharpest images, putting them in a separate folder, uh, keeping a folder of your slightly blurrier ones just in case you need them to fill in any, um, any points of your mosaic. So we're opening our images in Photoshop. Um, I'm duplicating the background layer because I always want to get back to my background to be able to do different different pieces of work. Um, on my duplicate layer I'm going into levels and for this one I'm just going to use auto levels. So I'm going to duplicate that again and then I'm going to start using the black and white filter now on this new layer.
so I was finding with my images that the reds and the yellows were giving me the most detail um, in particular the yellows so I was sort of putting out more yellow than red um, the other colours just take them out of there because you're only really going to get noise on those channels especially the blue channels you'll probably get a lot of noise on those So now we're going to duplicate our black and white layer. And we're going to sharpen it up. And I find for solar work, um, an unsharp mask works quite well. So at the moment that sharpening is too harsh. So we're going to go into blending options for that layer. And we're just going to set it down a bit. That's the nice thing with layers is we can sort of tweak this at each level as we go and we can go back to it and make, make other adjustments. Now we're going to add some colour back into the image so we're going to duplicate the original background layer and we're going to move that all the way to the top of the list. So we're going to go into HUE saturation and we're going to turn on the colourise option. Um, I'm just loading a preset I've already done but you can see I've turned on colourise in that preset and we're, we're going to manually kind of set the colour we want to put onto the sun. The important bit now is to set the correct um, blending option for that. So we're going to right click, blending, and we're going to set that to colour. And there you go, so we can see the detail from the previous layers, but with the overlay of that colour on the top. I would at this point save this as a PSD, um, so you can always go back into your layers and start playing about. Um, but for now what I'm going to do is actually flatten this image, so we're going to select all the layers and then uh, merge those layers together. Okay, so we're going to adjust our brightness and contrast, so we're going to up the contrast quite high and lower the brightness until you're sort of happy with how the image looks and we're just looking to really bring out the detail a bit more. I find that doing this also enhances the sphere like shape of the sun as well. And that's it, there we have our final image. So I'm just going to come back to what we were doing earlier with taking the mosaic now. Um, just to illustrate this, I'm going to show you one of mine that I've done with the moon. This is Microsoft Image Composite Editor. It does a really good job at building those mosaics up. As you can see, it's perfect. And it's because the moon's got loads of reference points. So it's got craters and all sorts of detail that the software can pick out to know where to stitch each image together. The problem we have with the sun is you haven't got that same level of detail other than sunspots there's, there's not really anything that um, the software can pick out to join the images together. As you can see that looks pretty awful. So what I've done instead is just use Photoshop to put my four panes together. Um, it can be tricky but I find if you set a blend on each layer um, you can then see through that layer to the layer beneath and just keep moving it about until it's in the correct position and eventually you'll get it perfect. And then you might want to sort of uh, feather the layers into each other a bit to get the perfect blend.
So for the final word on this, um, the next step up from this would be capturing H-alpha using an Etalon filter um, fitted to a refractor telescope or to use a dedicated solar telescope. Um, we're probably going to be looking about £1,000 minimum for this. Um, also, don't confuse this with a narrowband H-alpha filter. These are typically for, typically for deep sky work. Um, some people have got lucky with them for solar work, so if you've got one to hand, you can try it. But I don't think I'd spend a couple of hundred on one um, in the hope of getting some good solar jobs. Uh, also, looking through the comments in the live stream and the process image, uh, I've got one that says, nice little sunspot there, it's probably several times bigger than Earth. Do you know what the smudged area is on the left? The smudged area is actually a bit of dirt on my optics, probably on the camera. So the lesson there is to keep your optics clean. Um, and <laughs> on the live, uh, the live broadcast, one said, mate, I've just been in the garden, I can confirm that the sun is already live streaming. Yeah, these shots were taken on the hottest day of the year. Uh, in fact, a week has been a really good week for space exploration and exploration. Uh, Bob and Doug just landed their first commercial manned mission. Uh, and the Mars Perseverance mission is also launched this week.